when it came to what I discovered genetically, the way we even looked at the genome was different than it was being looked at. So how was at that time, and we've talked about this, which is that what does this gene mean? What does this gene mean? What does this gene mean? Right. And research is structured that way because that's the way science is dealt. Like let's define each thing and maybe this will turn this switch on or off and this will turn this switch on or off. But all you're ever going to resolve there is genetic conditions, meaning that you were born with it. You were born with a certain version of this gene, which directly correlates and equals to the problem. Now, if I can figure out a therapeutic to turn that off, the problem goes away. But you're not born with diabetes and cholesterol problems and breast cancer and fibromyalgia and, you know, and, and toxin uh, inability to deal with your environment. These things happen over time because it takes that many years, decades often to do the wrong thing for so long to get sick, right? Mm -hmm. Diseases are rooted in inflammation. We already, whether you talk to a naturopath or an uh, ophthalmologist, everybody agrees that yeah. disease is rooted in inflammation. What we don't ask is what is inflammation rooted in? Why am I inflamed to begin with? You have inflammation, you're cellularly weak here, you're gonna get that disease, right? Why did I get inflamed? Because what we're designed to do genetically, and I'll use myself as an example to answer your question, we are not doing that, we're in the wrong context. Our food, our environment in a big way, which is, which is probably the, the silent killer that we don't see or experience. Okay. Uh, and then our lifestyle, you know, the way we exercise, the way we sleep, you know, the way we move, everything about how we live. So taking that as an example, glutathionization, I, I mean, sure, everyone here listening is somewhat familiar with glutathione on that process of, I would think so. yeah, let's bind onto a toxin, send it to the liver, metabolize it, you drink some alcohol, you need to get rid of it, right? So your body does a good job of doing that. But what does good mean? Good means that we all do it, but to what degree? <laughs> There's certain genes for which it's not just about a SNP. A SNP is that spelling mistake in a gene, which is you're looking for that variant. And if you have a certain version, it does this instead of that, or it doesn't do it so well. You're tuning the dial down a little bit. What if you don't even have the gene? Like forget about the SNP or the spelling mistake. It's possible for a page to be torn out of your human instruction manual, completely missing. So you don't do that function. That's called a copy number variation, which most genetic testings testing companies don't test for because it's expensive. You have to hold, run a whole other test. There's something in between called an insertion or deletion, which is a paragraph is missing. So now if that SNP, that spelling mistake is so important that the ge genetic test you're paying for will tell you your list of SNPs, how much more important is it to know that a whole paragraph is missing? Or you have an extra paragraph right. duplicating the instruction or a page is torn out or you have an extra page duplicating the instruction. And if that's an instruction, what are genes? They tell your cells what to do, their instructions. If you're either missing or have a duplicate version of the instruction, what's going on with biochemistry that's being instructed by these genes or not being instructed because you don't have them, right? That's what I found in myself, that the key glutathione genes, I didn't even have. Forget about what version, I didn't have them. So this is exactly why me sitting at my desk right next to my business partner, breathing in the same toxic load, I had to be driven home with migraines where I couldn't function. He kept going and is still in that office today with no problem. Yeah. Right. The differences are what we were wired for, our capacity, then matched to our environment, which was either matched or mismatched, our ability to cope. You could either change the input, get rid of the problem, or increase capacity by supplementing and diet, which are all things we can talk about. Right. Yeah. No, I, I think that's the, 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 the two things I'd really like to emphasize is that is that one, the idea of the one gene, one disease mentality I, I said that applies to i think there's what maybe three or four hundred diseases but most of them that are that have one gene one disease yeah. but most of those kill you before you're 10 yeah there, there's only a handful something like you know like like some of the the genetic uh, huntingtons you know and stuff like yeah. that that show up as we age you know yeah. all the diseases that we suffer with um as we age are multiple, 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 multiple genes interacting with the environment. Yes. And, and so that, that's where, um, you know, I think what we're gonna talk about is why software and AI becomes so important um, sure. to, under, to understand this.